Hello everyone and uh, welcome back to another tutorial video. Today we're going to be going over something a little bit different. You see, I've gotten requests for spawning weapons and, and vehicles and I think that's really important because in this game it's a little more complicated to spawn things like vehicles without having to kind of do a lot of guesswork on orientation and a bunch of other stuff. So, I'm going to show you today one of the most useful tools when it comes to vehicles and weapons. So, I'm going to point your attention to this GitHub here. And this is the LSW CM, or the Loot Spawner with Colored Models, and it does include vehicles. Now, this is a tool that Kenneth has made, and I use it almost all the time because it's incredibly useful. Uh, but essentially what this does is it's going to allow us to put weapons and vehicles into our maps and kind of see their orientations and understand exactly what we're getting. Uh, because honestly, if you don't know all the weapons or vehicles and names and such off the top of your head, you're going to have a lot of problems. So let's get started in, in going into how to install this. So first things first, you do need to go to this GitHub address up here, and you're going to go ahead and you're going to download as a zip. And you can do that in GitHub by going up to the green code button and clicking download zip. So the first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to open up the zip file, and you're going to need to extract the contents of LSWCM main to somewhere familiar on your computer, whether it's your desktop, your downloads, or your documents. Or what you could also do is you can go into this content folder and you can grab all of these by highlighting them and click right clicking and pressing copy. And once you do that, you're actually gonna find the directory of your overall project, the overall Pavlov mod kit. And for me, I have mine in documents, but wherever you have yours where you can find all this information is gonna be super helpful. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna go into your content folder and you're actually gonna go in and paste those options. Now, I have already done it, so I'm not going to do it again, but when you paste it, you're gonna be pasting the blueprints, the materials, and whatever else is in that zip folder. If you don't know where this is and you can't find it, you can actually go to Unreal Engine and you can go to the root of your project, which is this all. And then you can right click the content folder and you can actually show um, in Explorer, which is this fourth option here. That's another easy way to get to this directory if you need to. Now it's really important to understand that you're actually pasting that folder into the root of your all and you do not want to put it into your UGC folder and the reason for that is that there is unnecessary things in there that you don't need to have they're mainly just for the editor use and if you put them in your UGC folder you're gonna add a lot of extra data that you don't need and it's gonna make your file size huge and we don't want that so after you've pasted everything into the content project folder you're gonna go into the blueprint and you're gonna find BP Loot Spawner WM and BP Vehicle Spawner WM. And you're gonna actually take these two blueprints. You wanna copy it. I use Control C. Then you're gonna go find your plugins folder and you're gonna find your UGC that you wanna put it in. So once you have these blueprints inside of your UGC folder. Go ahead and save to make sure that they stay in there. And when you drag one out, you will notice that you have this arrow here. And this is for the vehicle spawner specifically. And if you go into this right menu, you can actually see this little VSWCM to select a vehicle. And you don't even need to know the names off the top of your head, which is really nice. So if you select a option, you'll notice that you now have it in your game and you can see the orientation of it as well which is really nice and super useful if you need them to be in a specific orientation if we go into lit you can see a little more detail as it is the actual models themselves and it just has a nice blue material over it for the vehicles now if we do the same thing with the loot spawner which is just about everything else we can actually do the same thing there is now this lswcm which has a bunch of options the first one is going to be the actual weapon or item that you want to spawn. And when you select it, you too will also get a model with a corresponding material on it that allows you to see kind of where it is in the map. In addition, there's also other options just below it, such as the type of loot spawner, which is 
based off timer, based off round, and always available at spawn. And I'll quickly go over what these mean. The first one, spawn based off timer, is exactly as it sounds. The options right below are a timer of minimum and maximum wait times before this weapon will respawn after it's grabbed. The second option, spawn once per round, is called once round begin and round end inside your custom game logic are called. So let's take a look at our game logic so we can better understand what that means. So in our game logic, in the flow, you'll notice that we have these four options, starting, standby, started, and ended. In order for the loot to actually respawn properly, you need to have a proper starting, which is where it will instantiate and actually spawn the item. And then you need a round ended, so that way it knows to respawn it when the starting comes back. If you don't go from ended back to starting, the item will not respawn. And that's really important to keep in mind when making your game logic flow. The third option is always available at spawn. And it just says it like it says down here. After grabbing the item, the item will spawn right away. Right below it, we have the hide in game view, which is useful if you want to see what it looks like without that in the way granted that's not very useful to me so I never use it uh, as I do like to see it in game view this last option spawn without attachments is exactly as it sounds it will spawn without any scopes if it is by default like if you have a sniper rifle it won't spawn with a scope or any silencers etc right below that is the random loot option now truthfully I have had no success with this as every time I've used this option, I've actually had corrupted maps and I think I still have that problem to this day. So if anyone knows how to fix that, that would be really great. But actually I have no idea why it creates problems for me. But essentially you have this boolean. It uses a branch statement I believe to tell the overall instance to use the random list. And when it's checked, you have this random loot list below. And what this does is it allows you to pick as many elements as you want and the specific types of weapons. And when the loot spawner respawns an item, it will randomly select one of these options that you choose. Again, I've had no luck with this as it has created a lot of problems for me and usually crashes my maps. So again, if anyone knows how to fix that, that would be absolutely wonderful because that would be a super useful thing for me and some of my other maps. Similarly with the loot spawner, the vehicle spawner also has its own kind of unique elements that you can change such as randomized elements so you can have the same thing, kind of an array of different things. Granted it's not working for me here so I'm not sure what's going on with that. But right below that is the respawn time which we've seen before. You can have an initial respawn so the amount of time to wait before it spawns the first time. And you also have this thing called a vehicle team ID which is really nice if you have vehicles that are specifically for a specific team. So say you don't want one of the teams like team zero to be able to drive this vehicle, you can make it so that this only works with teams that are team one or vice versa team zero if you don't want team one using it. You also have a vehicle despawn time. Basically the longer it sits there, you don't want it to just always be there. You can have it blow itself up after X amount of seconds, which is kind of neat. And similarly in push, you can have it where the vehicle will only spawn in push game modes and that's really kind of the simple way of using loot spawners. There are some built-in options within the Pavlov uh, mod kit itself, though granted uh, the reason why this tool exists is so that way you can understand the orientation and the size and where things are actually being put without having to upload the map and play it and see where they are only to find out it's not what you wanted. So thank you all for watching. I hope that this is a helpful tip for all of you.